This is kind of a big deal. I think I might have watercolor palettes here that are over 120 years old. It's this one though that we're really gonna look at today. You ready for this? So I picked this up on Etsy, gosh, probably six months ago, friends, and I've done nothing with it. Oh gosh, I don't even know how to start this conversation because I've done so much research to try to figure out where this is from, who made it, so on and so forth, and I found nothing. My only clue, well, there's a few clues. Let's take a look at them. We've got Made in Germany, this was most likely a children's watercolor set. The construction, the materials, the elegance of it tells me a little bit about its age. But the thing that's got me confused is the incredible state that it's in. Now there is some fading, not even fading. You see this line here? This is probably the original. I almost think something was set on top of this for a very long time that maybe like I'm not a scientist, but maybe oxidized a little on this side. You have some rusting, obviously, just kind of the typical things you would expect to see with an old palette. All right, a little bit more investigative reporting here, friends. This is a Made in Germany watercolor palette from the 70s. And the one thing that look similar, oh, gosh, and I have a video where I painted with this thing and it still blows my mind the condition that this was in. I'm gonna link it below because if you haven't seen it, you need to bookmark it and check it out later. Okay, so soon you'll see the pans inside of this. They are absolutely not in this condition, but they are very similar in shape. This brand, I don't even know how to pronounce it. And, oh, well, that's it in German maybe, I don't know, okay. Angora paint boxes made in the Federal Republic of Germany. And that's how we kind of figured out that it was the 70s. Okay, guaranteed not poisonous, fantastic. So a little bit of clues there. This is also for kids. Um, I cannot find any evidence of professional watercolors being made in Germany that really made any type of vintagey kind of box like this. Well, it wouldn't have been vintagey when they made it. It would have been new, but you know what I mean. So my research has just led me to dead end after dead end. Disappointing, but also kind of cool and mysterious. All right, more rusting on the back. I promise, friends, I'm actually going to paint with this bad boy because you're going to see why. I, I, I am like, I've got to paint with this. I've got to see if there are any more clues. I'm going to try it out on two different watercolor papers. This is... Um, from Five Below, um, shockingly good paper. Anyway, that's for another video. And I'm also going to try it out on my Arches uh, sketchbook, my tra well, travel journal. Okay, I'm gonna link all the um, supplies below just in case you're curious. All right, so let's get into this because this is a little shocking. And I know many of you are gonna be like, oh my gosh, girl, put on some gloves but I promise I'm being careful. Okay, this is why I believe we are dealing with an extremely, extremely old palette. And let's bring this one into the picture. This is a video for another day. Sweet little vintage tin, but it gave me some clues. Okay, I don't in fact know where this one was made. I, I feel like maybe I should look up the pet. There is a patent number here. Maybe the patent number, maybe there's a prefix that would give me an idea of where the patent was from. But the first thing that I'm noticing is a, a very similar golden tone, whatever this metal is that was used during this time. And we know that this patent, I don't know if you can see this, but it's 1909. All right, so we're talking like 120-ish year old watercolors. Okay, like un, a little, just under 120 year old, okay? 1909. So, clues, yeah. So, similar gold. Let's close this up again, right? Similar, very, very similar. The way that it patinaed, very similar. I don't know if patina is the right word, but it definitely looks like the gold darkened. Yeah, okay, so 1909. 
So that is the information that I am making my moderately educated guess on the age of this palette. But let's get into it. I wanna paint with this, friends. I mean, you can't even tell what these colors once were. I have a little bit of clue here because there's like a pink staining, there's red staining, more red staining, but these others, no clue. Friends, look at this brush. Looks like there maybe would have been two brushes. I was hoping there would been have been something printed on the brush. It looks like it broke, got chewed, I don't know. There's like a plastic ferrule. Another clue as to this being um, for children. And then there's the remnants of another brush. This is so cool. Anybody else thinking this is cool? Cause I think it's cool. I hope you think it's cool. Head into comments, let me know if you're thinking this is cool. Okay, couple of things, just, just full on caveat. I'm going to be using the um, prototype for my new brush. If you're watching this, maybe the brush isn't so new anymore, but you know what I mean? Because after this, this, this bad boy is going to get sanitized because if there's any presence of mold, I want to, I want to prepare for that. Okay. Let's get her sprayed down and I want to be careful. I'm not going to go like crazy spray. Like I tend to do because let's be honest. I don't know what this is made from. I'm, I'm guessing that it was a student watercolor set, but we don't know. I'm guessing that a student watercolor set would not be toxic, but we don't know. I mean, if this was in the 1900s for the love, okay, this could be an utter failure. I'm just, just gonna go right there now and say that because paints of questionable unknown quality that are potentially, okay, let's just talk about it, almost, you know, 120 years old. So we truly have no idea what we're dealing with here. These could all just come out brown, right? I don't know, I don't know the science behind aging of paint. Of course, it would surely depend on what they were made from, if there were any like weird um, ingredients that would do weird things over time, but let's get into it. There's a, wow, there's a smell. There's, woo, maple syrup and iron. Okay, awesome, like a metal, like a metal smell and a sweet smell, interesting. Okay, we're doing it, we're doing it. Let's get into it. Okay, of course, of course it's brown. There's a lot of crumbling going on. These are more pigmented than I thought they would be. These could all end up being some shade of brown, which could be cool. We're gonna do a painting. No matter what comes of the swatching, my friends, I'm gonna paint with them because I just think they're cool. Okay, moving on. Come on, give me some color. I, I'm so hopeful, yeah, brown. Uh, I'm so hopeful that there is gonna be some kind of fun, gorgeous, something to be excited about color in here. This looks brown. This next one looks brown. Oh, wait. Not a bright color, but there is something, and I think this is part of a brush. Yep. This looks gray. Okay. Still brown. Okay. All right, we're gonna be doing a sepia painting. Friends, if you have any knowledge, I would love to hear from you in comments. Any guesses? Get in there and let me know. Now this is entire pan missing here. I think these are all gonna be brown. I don't know, this one down here is promising. Okay, more brown. I will say this, they're all different. And they're all, you know, not, I wouldn't say highly pigmented. I thought I would get like particles. This is like a crumb that looked like it was red and it's not, it's brown. I think, we are dealing with, like, can you see how that looks like it once was red, but the color it's putting out, I don't, I really don't wanna touch it with my fingers, is for sure, can we see that? It, it definitely looks like it once was red. And I see warmth, pinky warm undertones. We're gonna keep going and see what we see. This is a nice big full pan. What was it once? Who knows? It's brown today. It's brown, friends, and I trust you. Tr I trust you. I do trust you. Do you trust me? I know. I, I'm still holding out for something fun and exciting, but what this also means, the fact that we're still all in the brown town here means, or at least I think it means, that this thing is old. Okay, okay. We got something else here, friends. 
we got something else. This was a little crummy crumb and it had a, re a very distinct redness to it. And I, I'm just pulling it straight onto the paper just so I can get as much pigment out of it as possible. But I also don't wanna use all of it up because if this is my only like color color that I'm gonna be painting with later, then I'm gonna to wanna to hold on to it. It was in this general area. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna scrub her on a little bit more. That's actually really beautiful. I don't think that's what the color was when she first started, when she was born. Okay, all right, so we've got a little bit of a pinky situation, all right? We've got some particles showing themselves, which is okay, which is fun. Let's see what's in here. This looks like it more of a, like a burnt sienna, like more uh, very warm, yep. Interesting, okay. I kind of feel like some of these other colors like could have been something else like this, I feel like could have been a, a pink that got old. But this one I feel like maybe was actually like a burnt sienna-ish type color in its former heyday. All right, let's get into this one here. I'm sure, yeah, brown. Friends, I think these are old. Like, I think these are really old, maybe older than what I thought. I, I do feel like this box, let's just take another looky-loo at this. I do feel like this tin was extremely well protected. Wherever she lived, she was very well protected. All right, another brown. We're not sad, I'm not sad about the brands because they each have their own character, but I, gosh, I'm even more intrigued now, friends. I wanna know, I wanna know what this was. I wanna know its story. I want somebody to tell me all about it. It's very exciting. This is empty, but let's see if there's any remnants. Not really, not really. All right, I'm still holding out. We've got a lot of colors here still, friends. And I'm still holding out for some blue or some green or some something, okay? And there's a red one coming up again over here that looks red where the rest of these just look brown. I don't think we're in a situation like, a, the thought crossed my mind like, okay, did someone just take this cool tin a long time ago and repurpose it with their own paints? Maybe somebody made their own sepia palette. And I don't think that is the case. This, this definitely was a red once. Cause again, the paint, the little cake looks red. I'm almost getting like a purple vibe here but that maybe it faded. Um, anywho, I, I'm dismissing that possibility because these pans are all so uniform in shape and size. So I do, I do suspect that these were original pans. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five more left. I need to get another sheet going, uh, let these dry. I also wanna see what happens to these when they dry, if there's any indication of what color they once might've been. I'm going to kind of force that issue by pushing the color around a little bit, seeing if I can get any granulation out of these. These are actually so lovely. Just a, a creaminess while maintaining the sheerness, but we're gonna, we're gonna push each of these around a little bit and to see if that reveals any indication of maybe what these colors once were. And yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing anything yet, but we're gonna have to push push them around, bully them around, let them dry, and then we might see more. There's something happening here. I, I get a sense of some granulation, but we'll see. We'll see when they're dry. I'm just gonna continue through here. These are interesting. This was that little scrap of red, and I don't wanna remove too much. I think we might get a sense of some granulation from a lot of these. Are we having a good time, friends? Are we having a good time? Even though we're living here in neutral city, ooh, there is, maybe this once was an orange. I, I, there's a glow, subtle, but when I'm removing some of the color here, there's a glow, there's a something. Anyway, I know we're living here in neutral town, but are you having a good time? If you are, head into comments, let me know, say yes, this is awesome. Find more palettes like this, Christy, more, more, more or let me know otherwise. And of course, what would be awesome, go ahead and give this video a boop, friends. And that's a like, and yeah. All right, let's 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 just let's get back to it. Okay, this one intrigues me right there, that one. Okay, push it around, push it around. This one granulated already without me even doing anything. This one's granulating. Look how this one ran into that one. There's some gorgeous stuff happening. I gotta tell you, friends, I'm not as sad, like I'm not, I'm not sad. 
I was a little sad that these are all turning out to be brown, but I suspected that might be the case because they're so old. But what I'm not sad about is, oh, look at the glow here. Look at this, this had to have been a red, a pink, a red or something in its past life. But what I'm not sad about is the remnant that you can get a sense of what these colors maybe were, at least the warmer tones. And it's, it's quite fascinating to see the magic that they still have in them. All right, let's let this dry and see what we've got. Okay, friends, I've got to know, what do you think of this palette? Maybe you're a little disappointed like I am that everything is basically turned to brown, or maybe you're loving this like sepia vibe. I've got to know, head to comments and let's talk all about it. And while you're at it, head to that boop button. That's a like friends, and it really helps out my channel. Okay, I know I haven't finished swatching, but guess what? I'm actually gonna go paint with these. And I know you might be thinking, Chrissy, what, how does your brain work? Here's the thing, when it comes to art making, when I am in this studio, I indulge myself. I let myself do what I want, when I want, when it feels good for the most part. And I know that sounds uh, indulgent, but if this could be the one place in your life to be just that, to let yourself do what you wanna do when you wanna do it, regardless of what makes sense, let it be in your art making. Okay, sorry for that little existential moment, but it just had to be said. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zip it and let you watch this painting unfold. All right, as I finish up the swatching here with the last few colors, just a few things that I'm noticing with this palette. And I've got to say, if anyone watching this has any ideas where this palette came from, what the brand might be, I would love to know, head into comments and tell me, please, I'm so curious. All right, so a few observations. Number one, the smell. There is a distinct like metal smell when these are wet but it's combined with a weird sweet smell that is like maple syrup candy. I don't know, it's weird. I'm just kind of keeping my face away from this thing. I probably should be wearing gloves. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm also kind of just making sure I'm gonna be sanitizing my brushes that I've used after this painting session. Now with this final swatching, there are some fun surprises here, some colors that are more pink, which is so exciting and makes me want to paint some more. Friends, stick around. I'm working on this landscape next. And what I'm noticing about this palette in the state that it's in, as you can see, as we speed through this landscape, is that the contrast, getting like high contrast is difficult. These colors have been through it. Who knows truly how old they are, 
Again, my guess is at least 110 years old, somewhere in there. They look like they've been oxidizing and the pigments are shifted and the quality of the paint is really interesting when it's wet. I'll tell you this too, when I dip my brush in the pans that I've sprayed lightly, the color cakes, if you will, are almost spongy, very strange. But we're still getting good color out of these. The landscape, you know, it's fun, whatever. It's giving me a chance to play with all the colors now. But up until this point, I've been painting on a really cheap paper. It's actually paper that shocked me. I'm gonna be doing a video on it soon that I got at five below. I suspect there is a lot of cotton content in this paper, but not fully cotton. And so now I wanna try these paints on the good stuff. Let's do this. As suspected, the paint is taking so beautifully to the Arches watercolor paper. It feels that much more effortless. And I suspect that I'm gonna be able to get some contrast built up on this paper a lot easier. So I'm gonna just go ahead and let you watch this one unfold. I do have a few thoughts that I'm gonna share throughout, so stick around. There is something so magical about painting with an old palette. And this palette goes beyond old. I, I do believe this would be classified as actual antique. And so I'm sure there's many out there that are even thinking, Christy, why are you painting with this? You should preserve it. But I'm gonna tell you what, friends. I personally am gonna continue painting with this. I believe it is just a piece of history that I am privileged to own and I wanna make art with it. Now friends, let me know in comments if you agree. Would you continue painting with this palette or would you just pop it up on a shelf and let it look pretty? Okay, a few thoughts as I wrap up this painting. I am completely enamored with the personality of these paints. 
And now I have no way of knowing if this personality is how they were when they were first manufactured or if this is some kind of after effect of all the years that they've been existing. But there is a creaminess that is at the same time completely sheer. And that is the best way I can describe them. Now, you might be feeling like this vintage thing is your jam. And if that's the case, I have another palette that is about 80 years old. I'm going to pop that up on the screen. And also, if you're feeling like painting roses now, which I would totally get, you can watch this other video as well. And until next time, friends, I wish you so much happy painting.